the title of tonight's sermon. It's probably the longest title I've ever given a sermon. It's actually two sentences. The first sentence, what do they see when they look at you? The second sentence, what do you see when you look at them? We talk all the time about examining ourselves, about looking at the way that we're living our lives, about judging ourselves by the standards of God's word. And we don't have the power to condemn anyone else for the life that they live, the decisions that they make, but we can point them to what God has said regarding those things. The they in those sentences. I'm referring to the world at large. The you is the church. So what do they see when they look at you? Because they're on the outside. They're looking in. Maybe they're interested. Maybe somebody has said something to pique their curiosity about Christianity. And they know that you're a member of the Lord's church. So they want to investigate it. What do they see when they look at you? So those on the outside, first of all, we, we need to define who they are. They are folks who are outside the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13 says, By one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. They're not in the body. They're outside the body. They're not in Christ. They've never been, Galatians 3, 27, baptized into Christ. They've never put on Christ. You might define them as people who are in the world, but even more than in the world, they are people who are of the world. John talks about the dangers of being of the world. 1 John chapter 2. Beginning in verse 15, he says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Well, if they're not in the body, if they're not in the church, if they're not in Christ, if they're not abiding in God, they will not live forever. They're of the world, which means they're lost. Jesus talks about lost people. He talks about, uh, he gives the parables in Luke chapter 15 of, of the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost sons. That's plural sons. Not just the prodigal son. His older brother had some problems too. There are people who are in the world who are of the world who are lost. Jesus wants those people to come to him. He wants us to reach out to those who, who we have a chance to snatch back into God's fold. He talks about in, in the parable of the lost sheep, what man of you 
Having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not the nine, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven. Over one sinner who repents, then over 99 just persons who need no repentance. This lost sheep represents a person who has wandered away. Perhaps through neglect. Perhaps through indifference. Perhaps through not having a full comprehension of what it means to be a child of God. It's not a person who's, who's defiantly left the church. It's a person who's wandered, who's not mature. And that's the person we need to go out and find and bring them back to God's fold. And then he talks about that lost coin. What woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search Carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. A coin, an inan inanimate object, has no idea that it's lost. And there's a lot of people in this world that just have no idea. And we have a responsibility as God's children, as God's evangelists, as his ministers, as his servants, to go out and find those who are ignorant of their spiritual condition and to teach them the gospel. Teach them what God desires and then the parable of the lost sons beginning in verse 11 that a certain man had two sons the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falls to me so he divided to them his livelihood <laughs> And not many days after, the younger son gathered all, gathered all together, journeyed to a far country. And there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. And you know what happens there. He, he starts feeding the pigs and he wants to eat the pig scraps. And he says, I'm foolish for doing this. My father has servants who are eating better than me. I'm going to go back to him. I'm going to present myself to him as a servant, as a hired hand. And when we drop down to verse 20, he arose, he came to his father. But when he was still great away, a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the man said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father cuts him off right there and says to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet. His son, who was lost, who defiantly left his house, finally came to his senses and came home. There's joy in heaven over that. You better believe it. But then he had that older brother who had a, a bad attitude about his kid brother coming home after wasting his father's possessions. After living the way that he did, that older son, he needed an attitude adjustment as well. The point of all this is, is there's different types of lost people. 
And when we look outside into the world, we see people who have just drifted away. We see people who are ignorant of the truth. They don't know their spiritual condition. And we have people who are defiantly saying, I don't want to have anything to do with God, with Jesus, with his church. We have a different responsibility to each of them. But in their present condition, they are outside the church looking in. So what do they see? When they look in, when they start to think about their condition and when they start to think, you know, maybe there's something to this religion thing. Maybe there's something to, 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 to look into with, with Christianity. What do they see? Do they see the good things that, that Jesus talks about in Matthew 5, 16? Do they see us shining our light? Before men, that they may see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Do they see us fulfilling what, what Paul says? Galatians chapter 6, and verse 2 bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Or in verse 10, as you have opportunity, therefore, do good unto all men especially those who are the household of faith. Is that what they take notice of when they look into the church? Or do they see bad things? Go to 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. You know, the church at Corinth had a lot of problems. And Paul seeks to address a number of them throughout this letter. In 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles. The people you expect to be living like that, that's not how they're living. They think it's disgusting what you're doing. And you call yourselves Christians. You call yourselves the church of the Lord. But you're not dealing with the situation that's, that's right there. In the house of God. If you drop down to, to verse 8. Paul says your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, since you are truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You know, you, you get up there and you preach against sexual immorality, but, but you look at this dude who's sitting on the third row and you're not saying anything to him. There's no sincerity there, is there? There's no truth. A lot of times they focus on the bad things. What's the number one complaint that you normally hear from someone who used to be a part of the church, but they're not anymore. Well, it's just a bunch of hypocrites, right? We've heard this for years, decades, <coughs> centuries. That's been the excuse. In Galatians chapter 2, Paul addresses that. He stands up against one of his fellow apostles. Verse 11. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew, separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him. So that even Barnabas was carried away 
with their hypocrisy? When people look in the church, do they see sin? Do they see folks that are living in ways that are contradictory to what the Bible says? Do they see people who are playing the hypocrite? Do they see people influencing others in their hypocrisy? A lot of times the negative is what gets emphasized or highlighted more than the good. We need to make sure that we live our lives as close to what God has revealed in his Bible as we can. So that when they do try to come up with excuses for why they don't want to be a part of the church, they can't say, well, she's living in sin. They can't say, well, he's a hypocrite. This takes some self-examination. We need to look at ourselves and address the issues in our own lives where we can do better. Let's flip the coin now. On the inside, looking out. The inside is the church. The Christians. On the inside, those are the people who have put on Christ in baptism. They are the people who are a part of his redeemed. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism and into death, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Inside the church, inside the body, the folks who have been baptized into the body. Again, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 talks about that. Inside the church are the people who the Lord has added to the number of the saved. We see that in Acts chapter 2. After Peter preached that sermon on the day of Pentecost and said, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. 3,000 souls responded to that message and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Acts 2.47. Inside the church are the folks who have been born again. Who have become new creations. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When we become Christians, we have a, a reconciled relationship with the Father. We get to start over. We've got a clean slate. So what do we see when we look out? When we look out outside of these four walls, when we look out in our neighborhoods, when we look out at the various places where we go knock on doors, when we go to BBS, the, the houses that, that kids come for BBS, and, and, and we go out on, on the national brotherhood wide door knocking day in October and, and we go out and we tell people about our gospel meetings and we tell people about our friends and family days what do we see when they open that door do we see souls in darkness in need of the blood of Christ in need of direction. 
guidance from God. Turn to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 at the end of the chapter. Beginning in verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. What do we see when we look out? Do we see people in need of compassion? Do we, need, do, do we see people in need of blood of Christ? Do we see people in need of his guidance? Do we see our responsibility <clears throat> in pointing them to him? Matthew chapter 28, just before Jesus went to heaven, Ascended back to the Father. He said, beginning in verse 18, that all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That's a commission that was initially issued to 11 men, but it was not limited to them. As they taught others the gospel, they taught others the importance of teaching others the gospel. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, he told Timothy, he said, you teach other people who are faithful so that they can teach other people. It's a perpetual commission. It's not something that ended in the first century. Do we understand our responsibility in taking the gospel to the lost world? Or do we see something different? Do we see... <clears throat> An attractive alternative to Christianity. In the parable of the sower, Jesus talked about seed that was scattered. And some of it fell among the thorns. And it started to grow up, but then it was choked out. It withered and died. And when he explained this to his disciples, he explained what the parable meant. In Luke chapter 8, verse 14, he talks about how those that fell among the thorns, they represented the people who were choked by the cares, and the riches, and the pleasures of life. There are people who, yeah, Christianity is pretty cool, but man, I just don't want to give up the stuff I'm doing right now, right here. They're short-sighted, nearsighted. 
They can't see down the road. They can't see into eternity. And when we see other people living like that and seemingly enjoying life, <clears throat> are we tempted? Do we see it as, as an attractive alternative? In the great hall of fame of faith, chapter 11 of Hebrews, talks about how Moses decided to serve God rather than enjoying the passing pleasures of sin. We talk a good game, but do we truly understand that those pleasures are temporary? Sin may feel good for a little bit. But that feeling goes away. <clears throat> Is it an attractive alternative? Are we tempted to return to the world? Paul lamented the fact that some of his friends some of his fellow laborers left him. When he wrote to Timothy, he talks about a man named Demas who deserted him because he loved the present world. This goes back to 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 17. Do not love the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, don't be deceived by it. It's temporary. It's going away. But if you do what God tells you to do, he's going to bless you beyond measure. You're going to know true happiness by following Jesus. Peter paints a different picture. Of those who are tempted and, and who leave the fold. Second Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 18. <clears throat> Speaking of false teachers, he says, When they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is a brother, he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them. Than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment given to them, delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb. A dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. That's the true picture of sin. It may be pleasurable in the moment, temporarily, but it's disgusting in the long run. It's dirty in the long run. It defiles the soul that God has created. Don't be tempted. When you are on the inside looking out, don't be tempted by what looks good. Be committed to 
what he has revealed. What he has promised. What he has commanded. You're on the inside. You're looking out. And I hope that you see the responsibility that you have to your friends, your neighbors, your family members who are not inside. To those who are on the outside. To those who, who may be looking in. Let's live in such a way that they want to be a part of God's family. We need to recognize where we are and we need to recognize our responsibility both to God and to the world at large. Tonight as you've considered some of these things about the way we live our lives, the examples that we set for others, if you know that you've fallen short and, and you want to do better, if you want the prayers of the church, we want to do what we can to help you do better. We want to pray for you. We want to, we want to pray with you. We, we want to help you to get back to where you need to be. If there's any with, anyone with us who's, who's not yet put on Christ in baptism, and you would like to do that tonight, we can help you with that as well. This evening, whatever your needs are, if you are subject to the invitation, we ask that you come now as we stand and as we sing.